Hey YouTube, today I'm outside the Brick Square Post Office and today we're going to review this mock. Hey guys, welcome to Brick Talk TV, Terry here and today we're looking at another builder's mock, the Brick Square Post Office by Brick1980. Like many of you out there, this mock came to my attention around Christmas 2018 I think it was. Um, and a lot of people thought that this was going to be the new modular that LEGO were actually officially releasing that year. But it wasn't. It was a mock by Brick1980. This modular incorporates a British post office um, on this side with a fish and chip shop next door. It's beautifully decorated, as you can see, with flowers all around the exterior of this module. So it really makes it stand out and pop when you see it lined up against the rest of the, the cityscape around it. The instructions are available to purchase on rebrickable.com for around $20 at the moment. I've provided a link in the description below if you're interested in looking up how to build this. Um, the model consists of 3,450 parts uh, and at the time of recording this video, the estimated cost uh, to build it would be in the region of £1,100. Um, it took me quite a while to acquire all the different parts, uh, but the build was great. Uh, the instructions are really of a professional quality. Uh, they're really easy to follow. I had no problems in understanding what parts went where. Um, they include a sticker page, so you can do the stickers for the post office sign as well, which is cool. Um, so now what I'm gonna plan to do is to walk through you each level uh, to give you the detail of the inside so that you can actually get a feel for what this looks like in terms of a building experience. It's also worth mentioning that there are some figures that are suggested by the designer of this mock um, to be included in the, the actual build itself. You've got a postman, so the postman picks up the, uh, the letters from the post office. You've got a businessman. You've got this guy here who I think is actually working in the post office in the sorting room, although I may be wrong. You've got the fish and chip shop owner, and then you've got the lady, the postmaster, who actually runs the post office itself, um, which are interesting builds. So now we're on the base level, let's take a look at the external detail and then also the internal uh, detail within the model itself. So on this side, as I mentioned already, we've got the post office. External to the post office, we've got some lovely hanging baskets of flowers that are situated throughout, which are a lovely bit of detail. You've got the nice angled front with the sign over, over the top with some stickers that are provided as well, which you can print out and stick on. You've also got the um, flowers down the bottom in some flower pots alongside a British post box where the minifigs can post their letters. There is a bench here and I've actually added on this, this is a custom part, uh, which is from Brickazon, it says. It's an Amazon parcel, but I've stuck that on there as, as a little bit of detail within my city. Then there's actually, the next part is actually set back, so you've got a bit of depth to the, the front of the, the model. You've got um, another waste bin down the bottom there for people to put their public waste in, as well as another hanging basket. There's some stairs here which take you to the second level which I'll cover in the next bit and then if you move over to this side this is where the fish and chip shop is actually situated. So externally you've got um, the mandatory lamppost that's included in all the modulars. Uh, you've got some nice detail of a tree here at an angle. You've then got a seating area where people that purchase things in a fish and chip shop can sit and eat. Um, interestingly actually this uh, umbrella here is supposed to be a different colour uh, but the it's really difficult to get that colour, or, or it was when I was trying to uh, locate it. So I swapped the colour out for a slightly easier to get and cheap, cheaper umbrella part. Hence why it may differ to other pictures you see on the internet. And then you've got a lovely detailed front here uh, with some chips in the middle and, and two fish going either side, which I think are really great and work really well. Uh, on the internal detail then, so if we stick with the fish and chip shop on this one, you've got a lovely uh, menu on the wall here. You've got a little seat for people to wait. We've also got the counter, uh, which is really reminiscent of a fish and chip shop that I actually know in terms of having a, a nice glass cabinet displaying the fish, uh, saveloys and pies. Uh, and with also the utensils for things like salt and pepper, uh, a till with some money. And at the back, you've got a, a drinks vending machine alongside some sauce pots and salt pots. Uh, so it's a really great level of detail for such a small level, sort of a small size shop, um, but I love it. Uh, and it, it just uh, smacks me of the of the British fish and chip shops that I know and love. Um, over this side then in the post office, you've got a bit more room because it's slightly uh, closer to the, the front. Uh, inside, you've got the nice counter area. So you've got enough room there to probably have four people if you wanted to working within the post office behind the till. 
You've got some nice detail at the back of the, the till areas with some uh, letters and some mugs with some weighing scales to weigh the letters and a nice clock. Towards the front of the modular, you've got um, some parcels stacked up with some more letters uh, and a way to, to move the letters and parcels around. And then on this side, you've got a magazine rack where people can buy magazines and other newspapers that they may be interested in. There's also an addition door um, at the back here so you can access the, the rear of the of the post office. There's also another post box inside here so people can drop their parcels off inside the, the post office. Around the back, there's still a little bit of detail to show you. You've got a little alleyway here, which is actually blocked by the stairway that will, works in the middle. You've got a rear exit here for the fish and chip shop. The one for the post offices, as I said, is in the alleyway. And then you've got a level of detail with a light uh, and some bins and a bit of, a bit of uh, greenery growing up the back there. Um, overall, this field is really great in the bottom. I really love the detail. Um, I, I loved how it was uh, quintessentially British, I think. It kind of just sums up um, shops we would have seen of yesteryear, although there's not so many uh, these days. So now I'll move on to the, uh, the second level uh, and I'll walk you through the detail of that. So as we move up to the second level, of the post office modular, you can still see that there's great detail of flowers here. You've got the flower boxes as well as some roses growing up the outside here and also flower boxes there. I really think that um, adding flowers to the external of a building really kind of makes it jump out and actually just makes your whole city look really appealing. So I encourage anyone who builds mocks really to try and think about that, uh, to add it uh, in some way. On this side of the modular here above the post office, you've got now a sorting room here. So you've got various tables and lots of parcels distributed everywhere. You've got some sacks of letters, I presume, that are sat, sat around in various areas. And you've also got this nice little, um, you've also got this nice little trolley here that actually um, can put some, some parcels and letters in, which actually clips into, the, clips into the floor. So you don't have to worry about it moving around when you're moving your modular around. Inside here as well, you've also got a fireplace to keep the person sorting the um, parcels nice and warm during the winter. Then as you move over to this side, uh, you've got a door, which is where the stairs lead up to. And then you've got additional stairs to get to the next level, which again, we'll cover in the next bit. But on this side is actually a, a cafe uh, or a cake shop. So you've got a table full of different cakes, assortment of cakes. You've got a little table with some mugs and a seat. You've got a coffee machine situated over in the, in the corner alongside a till and a counter so that people can pay for their coffees and go about their business. If you look around the back, um, we've got some more windows detailed across here and we've got some additional flowers as well up here. Uh, again, the, uh, the color scheme, works really well I think. They complement each other with this, this green area and this white brick used here and this blue is very vibrant. Um, so now we'll move up to the, the third and final level and I'll walk you through that. So the third level of the modular is actually split into two separate pieces. It's not connected like the other two levels. Um, this level sits above the post office and is a nice slanted roof. I really love the detail of this roof. I love the different colour tiles. I love the way it's been constructed. It's very sturdy. Um, there's no actually way to get into it unless you break it open, uh, which is probably one of the things I think is missing on this one. The only downside to this is that they didn't make anything, uh, the designer didn't make anything of the internal area of the roof. Imagine there was uh, opportunity to make a loft apartment, uh, maybe for the postmistress or something like that, but um, they chose not to. You've got more level of detail here with the flowers outside and an additional hanging basket. Uh, and I love the way that this window here um, just situates and pops out of the actual roof detail and all the little detail with the spike at the top and the window detail around the edge is really cool, I think. Uh, also throughout the building, which I've not really mentioned before, is that there's this idea of this drain pipe that goes along and it follows all the way down the bottom of the building. Uh, again, another way just to connect all the levels uh, and show a greater level of detail, which I really love. On this side, where above the fish and chip shop, you've got a flat roof. Um, still got some detail around the front here, which is really good. Uh, and you've got a nice skylight here so that some light can get in. But if you take this bit off, inside here, uh, you've got a, an office essentially. So you've got a nice desk where somebody's working with a telephone. You've got a filing cabinet, a grandfather clock. They've put some flowers in here as well. And you've just got some banisters where the stairs from the lower level would come up. And I think this is where the guy with the bowler hat would be working as part of the minifigure. So he actually works above the cake shop doing something, maybe an accountant or something like that. Um, and then in the front here, you've got these nice details, almost look like flowers uh, that sit inside there. 
and that nestles right on top of there. Uh, and that's that's the top level. So overall, I think this set looks stunning. I think it's worth the cost to assemble the parts and actually build it. Um, but I did struggle to get the red doors uh, at the front, actually, and at the back. So I did substitute them into this blue colour. Maybe they look a bit better in red, but uh, I had to come from mainland Europe due to the availability. Um, but I kind of got there in the end with the blue doors. Uh, my only criticism, as I've already mentioned, is that the roof here wasn't made more of internally. Um, so you didn't have a level of detail there. But I mean, the price count is already quite high um, anyway. So it's probably a good job that they left that empty, just so they didn't inflate the price even more. Um, but apart from that, I think the builder's done a great job in this. And I mentioned before, if you're interested in actually building this module yourself, head over to Rebrickable. I've put the link in the description. Um, and if you like this video and this review, please give it a thumbs up. And also remember to subscribe uh, to the channel below. I'll also be reviewing this designer's other models, the Green Victoria, in a future video. So until then, stay safe and I will see you next time.